All right, so we're learning about Golang. We'll do a little bit of a review, and uh, then maybe we'll do a little preview, just here in process of learning it, and then um, move into new territory, hoping tonight to cover data structures. So uh, we've learned about functions, we've learned about variables, we've learned about the short declaration operator, and we've learned about func main and package main, and we've learned a little bit about, you know, using pre-written code like funked print line from package func. We're calling the function print line, func dot print line, and uh, yeah. So you know, and then a function is going to follow the syntax of the func keyword, a receiver if there is one, an identifier, parameters, returns, and then your code. Yeah. So there's that with functions, and then calling functions. So that's all uh, stuff we've already learned. And uh, we'll take a look at that, just because hearing me say it doesn't really jog the memories as much as seeing it. So we did little hello worlds, right? And my imports are just hidden right there. If you ever see those dots, just click them. And then we have the func. And so we could create a function, and it's going to be func, receiver, identifier, parameters, returns, curly braces, surrounding code. And so we create a function, func, keyword, identifier, no parameters, and then we call it, and it executes it, and it runs whatever code's in that function. And then we've learned about the short declaration operators and declaring a variable, and how a variable stores a value of a certain type. Variables store a value of a certain type. So it's like really important terminology, storing a value of a certain type. And uh, we assign a value of a certain type to a variable. So declaring the variable, I'm declaring that this variable is of type int. And so if I was to do that up here, var x int, I'm declaring the variable x is of type int. All right, so declared the variable. And the zero value would be assigned to it for an int, that's zero. And uh, we're learning about values and types. Go is all about type. And so Golang spec, or it's a big part of it, statically typed language. The Golang spec. We come down here and we could see the different types. And so the different types, like uh, numeric types, we'll go, well, I guess we'll just open that up and look at them. We have all these different unique numeric types, right? But really we can just use int. And an int is the same size as a uint. And a uint is either 32 or 64 bits. Right, so it's either uint32 or 64. So we just type int and it becomes a uint and an unsigned integer can store all the values from 0 to this if it's 32 bit or from 0 to that huge number right there if it's 64 bit. And uh, the int gets determined kind of at runtime depending upon the architecture of your system whether the word size is 32 bit or 64 bit. It's kind of cool. So it's a type. You can declare a value of type int or a value float 64 to store floating point numbers with decimals. And then we have a byte. A rune is an alias for an int32. Uh, and a rune is like a character. And so U UTF-8 is a 1 to 4 byte coding scheme. So 4 bytes is 4 times 8 or 32 bits. So a rune is an alias for int32 because it, it's storing when we store a character with UTF-8 we're storing 32 bytes. I'm just kind of like saying some stuff about the language here and uh, it's okay if you don't grab all of it but uh, you know maybe you'll grab some of it. And do we all know, do we all know uh, like how computers work and 
bits and bytes. Like Jasmine, are you familiar with bits? Huh? Okay, cool. So uh, I'm just going to give you my four-minute overview of how computers work and what bits and bytes are. So um, computers run on electricity, <laughs> right? Obvious. And electricity has two discrete states. We're not talking about the dimmer switch here. We're talking about the on-off switch. Electricity has two discrete states. So computers run on electricity. Electricity has two discrete states, on and off. And we can assign meaning to a, a circuit or a switch which is in an on-off state. Think of your porch light on Halloween. If the porch light is on, come trick or treat. If it's off, go away. So that's with one, one light, one circuit, one switch. We've stored and conveyed two values. If the light is on, come trick or treat. If the light is off, go away. If we had two light bulbs, we could store and convey four messages. Both lights on, both lights off. One on, one off. The other one on, the other one off. Right? So that's like circuits or switches in on-off states and coding schemes. And that's what computers are. They're like your porch light on Halloween. <laughs> Except there's a whole lot of circuits and switches. And you could say circuits, you could say switch, you could say gate. It's some sort of transistor. You could also say that circuit switch, gate, transistor. That's in an on-off state and we store information. We store information in it. Elena, does this make sense to you? A little bit? I'm bringing up a presentation. So computers run on electricity. Electricity has two states on and off. If we have one light, we could store and convey two messages. Come trick or treat, go away. If we have two lights, we could store and convey four messages, depending upon the arrangement of the on off of the circuits. Right? You following, Elena? Yeah? If we have three lights, we could store eight. Doesn't matter. Make up our own coding scheme. Right? But instead of writing all that off and on, I could just write zero and one. Zero for off, one for on. Because off and on is like too many layers to keep writing over and over. So that's why we see all those zeros and ones with computers. Off, 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 run away. Off, off, on, come in. Man, it all comes down to computers run on electricity. Electricity can be on or off and just circuits or switches in on-off states. And instead of having some wacky coding scheme, I could encode letters of the alphabet. So that's what UTF-8 is. It's just a coding scheme. And if I wanted to, I could, well, I'll come back to that in a second. But. So if I had this coding scheme, what does 001 represent? Which letter? B, right? What about 000? A. 100? Zero, zero. D. 010? Zero, C. A. B. Bad cap. All I could come up with with eight letters. <laughs> right? And so then we had, you know, and now today's computers. I think that's wiki. Today's computers have so like uh, i7 or 8 core i7, 2.6 billion circuits or switches 
on something the size of your thumbnail and the thickness. There's 2.6 billion circuits or switches that could be in some sort of on-off state and can be checked. Unbelievable. That's amazing. This is good to read, so I'll just put it in here. Circuit switches, transistors, and even gates are all words referred to this thing within a computer that can be either on or off. It's a circuit, it's a switch, it's a gate that can either be opened or closed, it's a transistor. Right? You'll learn that people use all these words to talk about the same thing, the ability of computers to store on-off states, and then check them. And then people just create coding schemes. So we can look up ASCII wiki. So here on Wikipedia, here's ASCII, one of the original American standard, what's it stand for? Coding, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, whatever. And here's uh, all the characters. So in binary, oct, whatever, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal. So the letter lowercase capital A in decimal is 65. Capital A in decimal is 65. And in binary, the number 65 is represented as this in binary. So if we want to store the letter A, capital A, it's on, off, 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 on. And when there's an arrangement of circuits and switches in that order, and we're using the ASCII or UTF-8, because the first part of UTF-8 is ASCII, we're using the UTF-8 coding scheme, and we have ones and zeros in that order. Guess what, folks? Capital A stored. That's awesome, right? I wonder if I have <coughs> just looking to see if I had um, let me see if I could find it numeral systems yeah I think it's in there So here's the decimal. This is how you count in different numeral systems. Here's the decimal numeral system. So 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? So if we wanted to store the number 42,400, let's just start with 420. If we want to store the number 420. I need 0 in the 1's place, 2 10's, and 4 100's. All right, I got four one hundred dollar bills, I got two ten dollar bills, and I got zero one dollar bills. I got four hundred and twenty dollars. This isn't a stoner reference, in case you're wondering. It's a reference to Hitchhiker's Galaxy, the meaning of life. Forty two. I just realized I had four twenty up there. I'm not a baker. <laughs> you're funny, Sid. I'm not a baker. So that's a decimal numbering system. So we're working with base 10, deci, des, 10, whatever. The binary numbering system, we work with base 2. So we go 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, so on and so forth. And in the 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s, 32s, right, that's 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And so we have a different numeral system. So here... If I want the number, like this is the number 18 in binary. I got one $8 bill and one $2 bill. That's 18 bucks. So I got one zero, one zero. That's how you count in binary. How many people you know this already? 
How many people this is like a little mind blowing for you? You can review this. Okay, but it's like, why is it that a rune is a U int, what was it? U int 8? No, it's four, four bytes, U int 32. Why is a rune an alias for, sorry, int 32? Because it's storing four bytes and UTF-8 is a four byte coding scheme. And four bytes is 32 zeros and ones for each character is stored. So all the letters of that alphabets and all the alphabets of the world can be stored because 32 bytes is a lot of data. So a little bit of a tangent there. Let's just finish it up. The formula for how many messages can you store is 2 to the power of the n. If I have one light, 2 to the power of 1, I could store two things. If I have two lights, 2 to the power of 2, I could store four things. If I have three lights, 2 to the power of 3, I could store eight th things. <coughs> if I have four lights, 2 to the power of 4, I could store 16 things. 16 different combinations of on and off. So 2 to the power of 16, 65,536. That'd be two bytes. So eight, we have a bit, binary digit, the zeros and ones, binary digits. Binary, by, bicycle, biplane, two, binary, two, zero and one, binary digits, on, off. And so we have bits, and then eight bits is a byte. And then 1,024 bytes is a kilobyte. And 1,024 kilobytes is a megabyte. And 1,024, round it to 1,000 if you want. Megabytes is a gigabyte. And 1,024 gigabytes is a terabyte. So this is if you have one megabyte, you have a million bytes or 8 million bits. Rounding it, rounding off that 24. So that's measuring your binary digits, and we get bits from binary digits. And this symbol is a combination of 0, 1. It's the power symbol. It's the on-off switch. 0 is off, 1 is on. You see the 0 and the 1 in it? So even that power symbol is getting back to the fact that computers run on electricity. Electricity can be on or off. We represent on off states as 0 and 1. 0 is off, 1 is on. It's pretty cool, right? <clears throat> so when somebody asks you how do computers work, computers run on electricity, electricity can be on or off. It's like your porch light on Halloween. When it's on, it means one thing. If it's off, it means something else. We just have these on-off switches, circuits, transistors, gates, whatever you want to call them, in different states of on and off. And then we assign meanings to them, like the porch light on Halloween, on, trick-or-treat, off, go away. right? But some of the meanings might be letters of the alphabet, like ASCII, or you know, now it's UTF-8. is the most popular coding scheme for text, the beginning of which of UTF-8 is ASCII. And you know, uh, the capital letter A is 100000 whatever one is capital letter A. And that's a coding scheme. And it, it literally gets translated back down to circuits, switches, transistors, gates, call them whatever you want, in different arrangements of on and off. And the computer could check it and find out an A is stored there. So how computers work. Um, and then we could go to Golang. Let's do it here. Whoop, close all. And we'll do that in the next video, fun with text. <laughs>